Aaron here. I'm pleased to be bringing you yet another Fusion 360 update video. So let's jump right into it. For quite a while, we've benefited from the dynamic resizing of the origin planes and axes as you zoom in and out. But what users found is that the same experience wasn't there when you created planes at angles. Not the case anymore. If you zoom out before adding this, you no longer need binocular eyes to see the new plane. A nice little improvement, but they get better. Next up, I want to point your direction to the view cube. As you'll note, this file, which was made years ago, is using Y as the up direction. This is because the default until this release was to have Y up. Going forward, the Z will be up. And so as I switch to the frame I derived out into its own file, something I've been doing quite a lot, the Z is now up. This aligns better for anyone trying to design for manufacturing, since CNC machines and 3D printers all use Z as the up direction. If you prefer the default to be Y up, no problem. You can change it in your preferences under general settings. Here you see default modeling orientation reflecting the new normal. Now, you might have noticed I switched from the assembly to the frame without having to select the model tab at the top. That's because I use a tab cycling keyboard shortcut. This has existed, but we made some changes to it to make it more intuitive and made a very, very important addition. So real quick, we used to do this with command tilde on a Mac and control tilde on a PC. This unfortunately didn't align well with other software, so instead we swapped tilde with tab, and on the Mac side we stopped using the command button and went with control. So I'll use this keyboard shortcut a couple times, and you can see me change from the frame to the swing arm, and the swing arm to the suspension, and so on, until we're at the cam setup at the end of the list. Now the very important addition comes in here. Previously, we didn't have a way to go to the left when cycling through tabs, and hitting the shortcut again wouldn't send us back to the start. We were stuck. But now, adding shift to the key combo will send us to the left. I'll go back and forth a couple times for the pure joy, and finally settle on that cam sample. Here I want to highlight a fantastic new learning experience inside Fusion 360. For new users, this panel will be open automatically, but I'll turn it on from the help menu. This context-sensitive experience will guide you through essential tasks with GIFs, videos, and other details. You can see I completed part of this lesson, but the next section is introducing new CAM users to the different tabs in the toolpath setup. I'll run through these rapidly, and when I'm done, it'll mark the lesson as complete. Make sure to see the other video we'll be linking to shortly that will provide more details on how to use this new learning experience. Next up is the CAM simulation step. So I'll go ahead and start that. Here, I want to note changes to the default stock options. The mode will still be standard, but colorization will be by operation and material will automatically be set to ceramic. These are options I previously would change every single time I wanted to do a cam simulation because they were just so much more visually appealing. Anyway, I'm thrilled to see these changes made and we hope you are too. When the simulation finishes, I'll go ahead and shut the learning panel, but remember it's always accessible and will offer tips depending on what you're working on. Let's change gears a bit and jump into our generative workspace to show you some of the amazing updates there. Let's start with one of my favorites by jumping into the edit model workspace where we prepare for these design explorations. I've done a number of steps here already and focused these efforts on the rear suspension of the spike frame. I'll zoom in and right away I notice some important obstacle parts missing for those bolts, pins, and other pieces of hardware. Luckily, I can now quickly and easily add these to the setup with a new connector obstacle. This tool is simple to use. Just select where the shaft starts and ends, define whether there's a bolt head or two, and you can even flip the bolt head if it defaults to the wrong side. Many times you want additional clearance here for tool access and assembly, so we can use the handles to enlarge this connector to compensate for that. On the back end, I'll add a double-sided bolt, and after a couple more steps, we're ready to define the generative setup. When I finish editing the model, you'll note the connectors are automatically defined and colored red to denote being obstacles, which will almost certainly be the case. Nice little time saver there. Skipping ahead in the setup, we'll find our next addition in the material definition. Because additive manufacturing is one of the methods we're synthesizing for, it only makes sense that we added a specific material library for this. With that in mind, I'll grab a couple of these and add it to my study. You should expect this list to grow, by the way. With the materials defined, it looks like this is ready to solve. But before I go and spend those cloud credits, I want to make sure I haven't overlooked anything. I'll start by running a pre-check, which has been improved in this release. But really, the main thing I want to do here is leverage the brand new Outcome Previewer tool. This is found right next to the pre-check and will allow users to quickly preview what an outcome will look like for their setup. 
prior to submitting the job. And even though this is an extremely coarse looking result, it will help give me confidence that I applied loads in the right direction and constrained the model properly without having to wait for a full on solve or wasting cloud credits. And as we go to solve this in the final quality, we now have the ability to access cloud credits from different contracts or accounts from this dialog. And further to that, as the generative study calculates, the status of it and all things generative will now be contained in its own section in the job status window. For those of you using the new UI, you'll want to check the blog for some great updates there related to add-in support, contextual tab highlighting, and sketch constraint improvements. In addition, countless other updates, fixes, and changes were made to this release that we don't have time to discuss here. Hope you saw something you'll put to use. Make sure to like and subscribe if this was helpful.